Hi, my name's Jack and welcome to Kit Guru. In today's video, I'm looking at the Corsair TC200. This is the latest gaming chair from Corsair and it has two material options, either fabric or leatherette, and both are available in two colours, either grey, white or black colour schemes. The version that I have is the fabric model in grey and white, and I think this looks great. So this chair retails for £349.99 here in the UK, which certainly isn't cheap for any kind of chair, but to be honest, most gaming chairs are around this price point, and some are even more expensive, like the Backforce OnePlus that I reviewed recently. So is this just another mass market gaming chair, or is it actually pretty good? Let's find out. So putting together the chair was actually quite easy on my own and took about 30 minutes. The first thing you want to do is get everything out of the box and make sure nothing is missing. I actually didn't get a manual with mine, which was a bit annoying, so I had to use the PDF online. Now make sure you open the two boxes, as one contains the tilt mechanism and the other has all the casters, the gas lift and covers and some screws. The next thing you want to do is push all of the casters into the metal base. Now this takes a bit of force. You want to put the gas lift into the base make sure that the red thing is facing upwards, then get the gas lift cover and put that over the top. Next, use the screws labelled K and felt washers to attach the tilt mechanism to the seat. For the next step, I recommend preparing your screws. For this, you need items O, P and the screws labelled J. Once this is done, you can screw the backrest into the seat. Now, the easiest way to do this is to put the backrest up against the wall and push the seat into it. This way, you should easily be able to line up the brackets with the backrest. Now once that's done, you need to add the bracket covers. You'll need the smaller screws labelled I and the cover pegs. Push the bracket cover into place, tighten the screws and then add the pegs. You're almost done, now just drop the seat carefully onto the base. Now the final touch is to add the neck pillow and this is just a simple elastic clip and that's it, you're done. So taking a look at the design of the TC200, I actually really like this grey white model. I'm a big fan of the colour contrast. The black version also looks really good though, if you prefer that. One thing that I did worry about with this chair was the fabric material, which can often be a lot hotter than mesh, which is what I'm used to on my daily chair. And there's been a heat wave this week in the UK, but this chair's been fine. I've had no issues with it getting too hot at all. And in fact, the leatherette version of this chair actually has perforated holes for extra breathability. Although unfortunately I can't really comment on that as I haven't tried that chair. Shape-wise, this does have a racer-style aesthetic, but the chair doesn't feel as narrow as others that I've tried, and there's plenty of space, and I'll touch more on the sizing later. When it comes to the craftsmanship of the chair, I did notice an out-of-place thread here and there, and the stitching seems to have crimpled this white accent material along the edges. Now, being super pedantic, the headrest material also doesn't seem evenly shaped, with a slight slant that isn't really noticeable unless you really look at it. These are just minor complaints though, these slight issues don't affect the actual usability of the chair, but the craftsmanship definitely could have been a little bit better. When it comes to branding, you have a black Corsair logo on the headrest, as well as a small yellow Corsair tag on the left side and on the neck pillow. And design wise, that's pretty much it. The chair doesn't really have anything special about it, but in my opinion, that's what makes it perfect for both gaming and professional use. You could totally use this in an office without it seeming too gamery. So the TC200 is definitely an upgrade over previous models from Corsair, including the TC60 and the T3 Rush models. Unlike those that had a plastic base, you get a powder coated steel base on this one, which is a huge improvement and it just feels a lot more premium. You also get large 75mm dual wheel anti-roll casters, and I've definitely noticed less rolling around when using this chair, which is great, not just for convenience, but for safety too. I have noticed that these can be a little bit rattly, as well as difficult to move sometimes, and that's probably due to the anti-roll system. Other than that, these work fine on wood and carpet, and here's a quick sound test. The TC200 has a class 4 gas lift with support to up to 120 kilos of weight, which should be fine for most potential buyers. 
Using the gas lift will give you around 12 centimeters of additional height, although it might be a bit less with compression. This will bring the seat height from approximately 47 centimeters off the ground to 59 centimeters. So gaming chairs are notorious for their lack of ergonomics, and after trying the Backforce One Plus earlier this year, I have to say that the TC200 definitely feels more limited when it comes to ergonomic options. For example, when it comes to lumbar support, you only get a bit of foam cushioning that sort of comes out slightly into your back, but I have to say that I actually think that's a good thing because there's a lot of chairs that I have tried that have a sort of permanent lumbar support cushion that isn't adjustable and usually these aren't in the right place because not everyone's torso is the same height or the sort of curve in their back in the same position so sometimes you can have lumbar support in a chair that just comes out in completely the wrong place whereas this chair is actually really comfortable with the lumbar support that it does have. As for head and neck support like previous chairs that I've reviewed, the headrest itself doesn't really come into contact with your head unless you throw your head all the way back, which is a position most people will never find themselves in. It's worth noting though that my day-to-day -day chair, the Steelcase Think V2, doesn't have a headrest at all, and that has never been an issue for me. I've never wanted one, I've never felt like I needed one, and I don't get head or neck pain or anything like that. So having a headrest that you don't really use that often isn't that much of an issue for me. What you do get with the TC200 is a neck pillow, which is okay, it's memory foam and it's plenty firm enough for good support. But it does seem a little low for me, I need to angle it up slightly for it to get in the curve of my neck. Interestingly, this chair is designed for people up to 6 foot 5 inches tall. Now I understand that that's like a minority, there's probably going to be very few people that height buying this chair, but I'm 5 foot 7 and this neck pillow isn't in the right position for me, it's too low. So if your torso is even taller than mine, then where is this neck pillow going to be? Like in your shoulder blades or something? I don't understand how that's going to work. Obviously, being someone that's not six foot five, I can't say for sure, it might be fine, but considering I'm five foot seven and it's too low for me, then I can imagine if you're even taller, it's going to be an issue. The TC200 offers 4D armrests. Now that means that they can go up and down, backwards and forwards, left and right, and in and out. Now all of these require a button to use other than the left and right angle adjustment. And there is one button on these armrests that's really quite difficult to use. So to actually push in the armrests left and right, so basically adjusting the width, you have to hold in a button that's on the side. And if you can imagine, you're holding in a button on the side of the armrest and then having to push the armrest out or in. So not only are you adding pressure outwards into the chair, you're then having to counter that pressure if you're trying to move it closer to you, which definitely doesn't work that easily, so I don't think this is a good feature at all. As for the design of the armrests, they're simple PU with a bit of cushioning, but Corsair's opted for this sort of triangular design and I'm not entirely sure why, I don't think it looks that good and sort of takes away from the sleek look of the chair. For those of you wondering about recline options, I would say that this is where the chair shines. There's a lever here on the right hand side, just pull this up and you can recline backwards. Let go of the lever and you'll be locked into a certain recline position. Now I think this is probably the easiest recline mechanism I've ever seen on a chair. One single pull will let you recline from 90 to 180 degrees, which is a little nerve wracking actually at first because it feels like you're going to fall off the chair, but it's stable enough for me. There's also a free recline option based on pressure. Just pull out the lever for the gas lift to the free position and you can recline just by leaning back. But I don't think that this is a viable way to sit back and relax as you need constant pressure for this, which is no way to relax in my opinion. Now this leaves you with the lever mechanism to recline. And that means you have to have a free arm. And if you're using your keyboard and mouse and playing a game or you're playing something that's quite intense and you can't take your hand away, then you're not gonna be able to change the recline on this until you get a free moment. So is this gonna be a deal breaker? Well, potentially. Arguably what makes this recline system so easy actually adds a big limitation for a lot of users. The most important thing about any chair is the comfort. And I've gotta be honest with you, the TC200 holds up really well. I've had no issues with my neck, my back, or my legs, or anything like that when testing this chair. Honestly, it's pretty comfortable. Both the backrest and seat cushion offer plenty of support, although I do wonder if you're on the wider side, whether or not your legs would dig into these side bolsters, as they are quite large. I have noticed that based on how I sit, the edges of my legs do rest on the side bolsters slightly, unless I sit with my legs close together, which let's be realistic, nobody does. Now I've not really felt that this is an issue, but if you'd like your leg position a little bit wider, or you are on that wider side, you may find these side bolsters annoying. 
Now, although the TC200 does have these side bolsters, the seat itself is wide enough at 39.5 centimeters and deep enough at 45.5 centimeters to support a two leg up position if you're into that. And yet it feels totally natural and fine. So there seems to be a sort of running theme that I've noticed when reviewing gaming chairs. And that's that even though the ergonomic options seem to be quite lacking, they're still comfortable anyway. The real issue comes with long-term use. A year down the line, I may look back at this chair and think, I really wish there was more lumbar support. I really wish there was a seat tilt or something like that. But for now, this seems fine. What I would say is if you're someone that knows you need a lot of ergonomic options, maybe you've had a back injury, maybe you need something just to have more support, then I wouldn't opt for a chair like this and would look at something more like an office chair with more ergonomic options. But if you're someone that's looking for a gaming chair that has both a great style and also is comfortable as well, then I think the TC200 is easy to recommend. And that's it for my review of this new gaming chair from Corsair. What do you think? Let us know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, it really helps out the Kit Guru channel. And if you want to see more from us, be sure to subscribe, hit that bell icon as well, and you'll be notified when we upload another video. If you want to pick up one of these Kit Guru t-shirts and support us, the links are in the description. You can also check us out on Patreon as well to unlock some exclusive content. Be sure to follow us on social media for the latest updates. My name's Jack, you've been watching Kit Guru, and I'll see you in the next one.